Aloha, it's Mia. And today we're gonna talk about passion, la passion. I'm talking about passion in a way that some people may have been uh, felt misled or whatever by the title of this video, but really I'm talking about um, not passion in a sexual way, but more so passion in what gives you life. What do you enjoy doing and what helps you to be happy? When I say passionate living, I'm referring to uh, living a life and leading a life um, that allows you to delve into your passions on a regular basis so that you feel more fulfilled in life. So, okay, I know everyone has obligations. They have responsibilities. Um, some people have to go to work, work um, in a building all day, and some people have children that they need to tend to, take care of, cook for, what have you. I understand that. I understand that a lot of people's time um, or what they know to be time is um, accounted for and a lot of the time um, we don't especially women we don't really cut out a chunk of our time for ourselves um, and so it is my hope that some of you will begin to realize um, the importance of this and we'll get back to what you're passionate about. What activities do you enjoy doing? You can start by um, thinking back to when you were a child, okay? What did you really enjoy doing? And I understand as we get older um, or grow in age that our passions may change. But sometimes you'll find that a lot of our passions do not change. So for example, when I was a child, you could if I was around a pool you couldn't get me out the pool like I was going swimming I was about to make up swimming games I didn't need nobody else in the pool like it was I wanted to swim and sunbathe like at nine that that's what brought me joy I extreme I enjoyed it extremely um, and I was lucky to have the the opportunities to um, do that on a yearly basis because my grandma and my great aunt um, valued travel. So that's how I was introduced to traveling and not staying in the same place for a long period of time. And I was also able to swim. So if we were going and I needed a bathing suit, let's go. Like, <laughs> let's get in the car. I've also always enjoyed writing and speaking has always come naturally to me. So those are some of the passions that I have. Now, a lot of people have passions of um, dancing, which is also something I have. Painting, drawing, reading. There are so many things. Hiking. Um, I just went hiking yesterday with one of my co-teachers and it was absolutely beautiful. And so this is something that I'm, I'm speaking of when I say sometimes we will learn about activities and they will become new passions. But if we don't ever take the time to allow ourselves to learn about new things or to engage in them or be open to the possibility, we will never know. We won't find anything that will fulfill us in a different way that we never thought was possible. Why I say it's important for us to get back to our passionate living is because for so long we have been taught and instructed that when the bell rings, we move. Um, in order to live, we have to work a job. If we're lucky, we can get a career which most of the time a career is just a job that we really get to choose, but you're still doing a job. Um, and so day in and day out, you report to this place of where you work and you give at least 
if you're full time, you give at least eight hours of your day, every day, um, to the cause of something else and helping someone else gain. For example, it's Monday, okay, Monday morning, oh, I, have to, I work a desk job, okay, I'm an administrative assistant, I've been that. So Monday morning, I get up, I get dressed, I drive, I try to get something to eat, most of the time it's, it's something that's a hot mess, like an Egg McMuffin, um, and I go to work. I sit at work, I might not even have any work to do, like, there have been many of days where I would be at work and I don't, it doesn't take me a long time to understand something. Like you say something to me, I'm going to do it and it's going to be done. It does not take me eight hours to do these mundane tasks that you're trying to get me to do. Most of my employment life, um, I would say probably one fourth, if not half of it was spent just sitting at a desk. Um, of course I would go on the internet and look up stuff I would just look up and be planning stuff. But um, what I'm saying is your obligation to just be there, to physically be there, to be stuck in a building, to not be able to go outside and if it's a nice sunny day that's in the middle of winter, you can't even go outside and enjoy that one day because you have to be in this building. So pretty much what I'm saying is, you know, we give so much of ourselves to someone else. We basically give away our life force. That's all you're doing. You go to work, you're trying to make these these shillings, pesos, and dollars, and in the end, you'll, you will learn, hopefully you'll learn that that's not really money. And um, you're breaking your back and you're killing yourself doing the same shit over and over and over. And you're not learning, you're not engaging, you don't have any joy, you have no self-fulfillment. You try to squeeze in something here, here and there late at night when everybody else is asleep and you're like, okay, I can get up now during the moon day because I say it's a Sunday and a moon day and you have to do everything for yourself in the moon day. You have to get up in the middle of the night to do your hair in the moon day because during the Sunday you're at work for eight to 10 hours and then you come home and you have to be that person for your family. And so it's really key that we find our, our passions again, we find our joy again, um, because that is what's going to help you um, sustain life and hopefully get to the point where you have a, a, a much clearer understanding of who you really are. And a way that you can attain that, I believe, is through your passion and just enjoying something that you truly enjoy and don't need any gain from it, you just enjoy doing it. If it's going out to a park and sitting on a bench, like, just do it. Now, the whole making money, money um, thing from your passions. A lot of people say, find what you love to do make it into a business and survive off of that. I would say to that, I believe that is true. However, there are certain requirements that you as a person, as a spirit have to go through before you can do that. Use your passions to help you um, live the life that you want to lead. I know it should be done in such a way that it is purely heart driven and you shouldn't manipulate or try to use your passion and what truly makes you happy in order to just be another capitalist. That's not the, the point or the goal of really learning yourself through your passion. You, you, it's, uh, I don't know if I'm making sense with this, but it's, you have to put yourself in it. You have to learn yourself in it. You have to use your passion to help you get into your inner self. You have to allow it to transform you and to open you up and to help you grow. And then at that point, you can use it to help you help other people because your passion should ultimately 
help other people. And if you don't get any monetary gain from it, you are paid through the fulfillment and the joy that you feel. So when you use a passion to only get monetary gain, you've totally just missed the boat. Like you've missed all boats, it's no more boats, you gotta wait another month till the boats come back. So, um, you know, don't be so money hungry. Take the money out of it. Just find your find your passion and engage in it. Just find your passion and engage in it. Oh, practical usage. Write down three things that really, really, truly bring you joy. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks of them because they're not their passions. They're your passions, okay? Um, write down three things that bring you joy and then look at your schedule. You may have to write out your, your seven day schedule to see where you're using your time. Um, where is all your energy being put towards? If all of your energy is being put towards work, you have to find a balance. You, you, you absolutely have to because you're not living for you at all. You're living for the total um, sustaining life of something or someone else. So um, you have to really get organized in how you spend your day, how you spend your night, how you spend your time, how you spend your energy. Um, it's just like doing a financial, a financial journal, just writing down all the things you spend your money on. It's the same thing with your time because I guarantee after you look at it, you will have at least an hour once a week to engage in your passion. Like you really will. You will have at least an hour. Now, if you don't have energy, that's another story. That um, it may have to do with, you know, health issues and what have you, which to that I would say, um, you need to change your diet and you need to stop eating fast food, number one. So that's what I would say to that. You know, if you're, if you're in a place where you're totally healthy, you feel, you know, you're fine. Um, you need to find at least an hour for yourself. You really do. Because that will, the power of that has the ability to change your whole world. It has the ability to change your mood, um, what to look forward to. Some people go to work every day and have nothing to look forward to. They don't even do things on the weekends. They don't really have friends that they hang out with. And that's fine. I'm not saying that you need to have that, but, um, re-engaging in your passion has the potential to um, make you feel alive or more alive than you had been feeling. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to bring this information to you because um, it's important. It's important that we are all happy and it's important that we're true to ourselves. I hope this helps someone I hope someone who has lost their passion um, can re-engage with it um, through any technique, any anything. Just just find it again. Just find it again. Okay. So um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.